Welcome back to Dice at Dusk. In this episode, I'm going to be going over the one to six player game, This War of Mine. This game is a survival game in a time of war, but instead of fighting a war, you're just trying to survive it. So let's see if this game's any good and what I think about it. So stay tuned. This War of Mine is a game about war and survival. But instead of playing an army or a soldier, you're going to be playing civilians that are just caught in the middle of this war. This war is devastating and, and you're just trying to survive it. In this game, you're going to be going out trying to find different things to help build up this house that you and four survivors just, just happen to find each other in. And it's 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 pretty it's pretty good and the theme is is definitely it's the theme is there the theme is heavy and uh, it's it's dark I wouldn't I wouldn't recommend somebody with young children playing this game with them because it is a dark a dark game so this game is played over a series of days those days make up chapters and there's three chapters in the game so the days are broken up and that's kind of how this game plays. It's just this, these parts of this day and you're going to be doing them over and over and over again and doing different things to try to, you know, build up and, and find food and, and find parts and, and, and components that you can use to just build things in your house to help you survive. The first part is the morning phase. And in the morning phase, you're going to be drawing an event card. This event card is the tr these event cards are the trackers to the game really it's a counter to the game these in this deck after you get to the third chapter you're going to get a cease fire um, a cease fire card and when that comes up that's it that's the, the the sign of the last round and then after that round the game is over so you at the end of the game you're trying to have one of your four original characters of the live and that's it that you're just trying to survive this war and it's it's like I said it's it's deep in theme and, and very dark but that morning that morning phase is the first one it's real quick and you're just you're just resolving these uh, event cards that are never good they're gonna they're gonna cause cold they're gonna they're gonna make famine it just sets up the feel for that next day. The next phase, or the next part of the day, is the day phase. And in this, you're gonna be taking your characters and you're gonna be moving around your house, the house that you guys are in, that, that you found yourself together in this house. And how you do this is when you first get to your house, so the first round, there's gonna be a lot of locked doors, there's gonna be a lot of rubble everywhere, there's gonna be heaps of junk and furniture and all of this stuff you, you're gonna to wanna to clear out. So you have actions, and, in, and with these actions, and there's three of them, and there is advanced rules, but I'll, I'll get to that. Um, you have three actions to start, so you can, a movement isn't an action. But, you know, uh, digging through a heap to try to find stuff, that's an action. Or, or picking a lock to try to get into a room, into this house, is, is an action. And then you can have actions like building a stove or building a bed. And, and there's different things that you can build in this game, but you need the resources to do it. And that's why you're digging through these heaps and searching the furniture. You're trying to find these resources to help you build your house to, to help you ma help make your house better and, and set you up better to survive and and protect your protect yourself because later on in the game there's going to be people coming in trying to steal your stuff and trying to kill you so you're going to want to do all of these now the way the movement works is as you get injured or as you you know you get hungry or your misery goes up your your actions are going to start going down. So the more you take, the less you can do. So that really hinders how much you can get done in this day phase. And that's why it's important to keep, you know, keep your your people fed and to keep them happy, but it's I mean it's hard when you're when you're in a 
just a war devastated city that you're just trying to survive you know you're just trying to get by so that is the first part of the day is the day or the set well the second part of the day is the day phase the third part is the dusk phase and this is when you'll be feeding your character so you'll be uh, you know giving them water you have to give one character water or every character one water and if you don't then they're gonna go and um, they're, they're you know their misery or their hunger is gonna go up and that's that's what will happen if you don't give them water and now you also have to feed them and they have different types of food they have vegetables uh, raw food and canned food now you can one you can choose not to feed someone which just means their hunger is going to go up or you could feed them vegetables which means you know nothing happens raw food brings down their hunger a little bit and then the canned food is the best which brings down their their hunger even more so you're going to make these decisions in during that dusk phase to to feed your characters and what characters you want to feed so you might not have enough food to go around and you have to make that tough decision of who's going to eat like who's who's going to go hungry this round and i that again just just drills that theme of like that wartime theme when people are just trying to survive and it's it's pretty neat so the next phase is the evening phase and in that evening or in the evening phase you're going to be setting yourself up for the following phase so so what you can do is you can send somebody to bed so you know that fa fatigue and how how tired they are that's going to go down if you, if you send them to bed so if you built a bed in in that day phase um you could send them to bed or you can just have them sleep on the floor or and you're also going to be setting up a guard so there's going to be a guard for you to to protect you from invaders that are going to try and, and loot you and hurt you later and you're also going to send people out one or more people out to scavenge and and scavenging is going to different locations and just trying to find more stuff to help you survive and that's what you will be doing in that in the evening phase when you you know you're just trying to set yourself up for success really and and trying to figure out because certain characters can carry certain amounts so the people that you send out are you know they're they're going to be able to carry so much so say you have a character that can carry six different things or six weight we'll say and uh, you have another character that can carry three that means you have a total weight of nine that you can carry and each component has a weight or each each token has a weight that that it costs and uh, there are components like water that's that's a way of weights of one which at the end of the next phase you can kind of just take as many as you want that you know to fill up that weight but um so at the end of or the each player has a weight and the downside of this is, yeah, you might have a character has that can carry seven or six, but you don't want to keep him scavenging because every time they either guard a house or they they go out and try to, you know, they go out in in this exploration phase or the scavenging phase, then their fatigue is going to go up. So eventually, you're going to have to let them sleep, and that's part of what you were doing in that evening phase. You know, you're you're letting that that player sleep that's been just constantly going out or constantly guarding because certain characters are better at like re-rolling because everything in this game and I'll, I'll get to that a little later on but everything in this game is really dice rolls you know they're it's just rolls for how much damage or how much stuff they're going to take um and that's what these the the evening phase is set up now that sets you up for the next phase which is the scavenging phase and this is when those players that you decided to send out are going to be going and and actually picking a location so they're going to be going to uh, one of three locations the locations are set up and it's kind of weird the, or it's, it's kind of it's great really um, there's three different locations and they're three different distances now there's a game it's called one deck dungeon that does a similar mechanism with what they do and that's they use these exploration cards so these locations from nearest to farthest 
are, you know, are the amount of time that you can spend there. So if you went to the closest location, you're going to set up an ex exploration deck of 14 cards. And this 14 cards, they, they are, they are your, your counter. That's how long you're going to be there. And then there's a further location, which is 12 cards. And then the farthest location is 10 cards. So the closer locations, one, all the locations have different things. Like say a hospital is going to have more meds or, you know, a, a store might have more food that your uh, chances are you're going to get more food in that. And uh, that's a pretty, it's, it's pretty neat. It's almost like, um, like Dead of Winter, how you go to a different location and you might find, if you go to the gas station, you might find fuel or you might find, you know, food. But if you go to the school, you're probably going to pick up more people because that's, I know that's what happens to me. I always just pick up freeloaders in that game. But um, that's what you're doing. You're, you're, you're going to these locations and you're exploring. Now, what you do is you set up that, depending on which location you went to, you'll set up that many exploration cards and you'll be, just start flipping them over and resolving them. Now these cards can be like uh, loot the pantry or you know loot a heap, and those are good. Those cards will give you stuff and and maybe even give you more with a with a die roll. But then there's also cards called reality impact. These cards are bad, and and what they do is they start. There's a deck of cards called the colors deck, and these colors correspond to colors on the card with a number. And this is where the game really, really shines. So what you do is you're going to draw a color card and it's going to give you a color like, you know, red, blue, black. And depending on that color, you'll look at, say, your location will have those colors on them or a card that you have is going to have those colors on them. And then they'll have a number inside of that color. So if you drew that red card, and then it says, look at the location card, you would find that red number and you would open up a book, the book of scripts. And like I said, this is where the game shines. There's a lot of cards in this game, but you're going to see them all. So the, the cards in this game, I mean, especially the exploration cards, you're constantly flipping through them and there's really not that many. But this book of scripts is what you're going to be referring to for these little scenarios that come up. And there's, I believe, like 1,600 different little scenarios that you're going to be going to. So the chances of you finding, you know, the same or doing the same one over and over and over again is, is very slim. At least, you know, for 10 games, you know, that you're going to you're going to be doing these things and it's just a different story. And it's really jammed pack of full of theme. So like I remember one, it was uh, I was playing with my wife and we were going through and, and we flipped it over and then we searched this book and we found the store and it was like however many survivors you left back at your house were then pulled out of the house by soldiers and held at gunpoint. And then you randomly gave each survivor a number and then if you rolled that number, they were just shot in the head and killed forever. So it's, I mean, there's, there's definitely chances of you just dying like that. But, but the theme, like I, the theme is there. The theme is definitely there. So that's what you'll be doing during that scavenging phase. The next phase you'll be going at is, or doing, is the night raid phase. Night raid phase. The night raid phase is where you'll have their night raid cards that you just flip one over and it will have two values. It's going to have a wound value and then it's going to have another value that tells you how much stuff they're going to steal from you. Now this is why you you kept that guard at the at the door, you know, you you put somebody there cuz they can roll and depending on if they have a weapon or not, they might have a chance to block even more. So if you give them a knife in the knife you can you can roll and the knife gives you up to three that you can roll so if they came in it was going to do two damage and they were going to take five things you know you can roll that die if you got a three you could get rid of that damage that they were going to give you or you can minus however many so if they were going to take five different things from you then you can you know take away three and they're only taking two 
Now what, again, this is inst very tough decisions, whether A, I let this guy get hurt and wounds, you know, wounds might go away, they might not, and that's later on, but, um, or do I let them take the stuff that we really need to feed our, our people? And that's, it's a hard decision and it's a real pretty quick round, but it can, you know, those the decisions that you make in this round can really devastate your characters. The final round is the dawn phase. And during the dawn phase, what's, what's gonna happen is those people that went out exploring, they're gonna bring back whatever they can. So whatever they can hold, they're gonna bring that back. And then what you're gonna do is if, say if somebody's injured, you can assign meds to it, or meds to that character. Um, and then what's going to happen is a fate card. And this fate card will tell you, basically it's the fate of those characters. So if a character's wounded, it might be the fate of that character would be any character that was wounded and didn't have a bandage, their wounds go up by one. Or it could be, you know, if, if any character with a wound or a bandage on it, their wounds go down by one. Or if a, if a character is ill, and you don't you didn't give that character meds their wounds can go or their illness could go up by one or down by one and really the the fate cards are the fate of your characters and what you'll also be getting which is one of the few good things that you get in this game are narrative action cards and these cards you'll be drawing two of them and you'll look at them and you'll choose one of them and these cards will allow you to do things like maybe you can build something without using certain resources or, or um, maybe you can ignore one of the night raids that come in and nobody's gonna get hurt and nobody's gonna steal anything and that's that's the final uh, final part of the day is that dawn phase and like I said that narrative action it's very important to pick a good one because Th those can really save you. I know they saved us when we played. Now that's really it. You know that the ge the game is is played throughout these days, and you'll just do these days over and over and over again until you flip that ceasefire event ceasefire event card over, and uh, you play that last round. It's like that you know end of game one last round, and then that's it. And you're trying to have one of your original characters survive. And that would be how you win if you call it winning. You know, it's just, this game isn't, isn't really, it's just survival. It's, it's not about winning. <laughs> it's about surviving. So what do I think about the game? The game is packed full of theme. The, the theme is, is definitely there. Uh, you feel the whole time like, like you're part of this war and you're trying to survive this war. And, and the theme is, is heavy and, and deep. Now, because of that, I, I don't recommend, and I believe the box even says, you know, 18 plus to play this game, because there are, I mean, there, there's a lot of dark moments in this game. I just remember one that, that sticks out that we were out exploring these different locations, and then we flipped over one of these cards, these reality impact cards, and it said, it brought us to a story in that book, and, and it said that these people were, were drug out of the house and, and held at gunpoint, and they could have been killed, you know? Thankfully, nobody was, but um, that it was just, it's dark and, and, and graphic. The, the game is very graphic, and that's good for me. Like, I, I like a game with theme, and one with story like this, it just, it hits the nail on the head. And this, this game is probably one of the better ones I've played in a while because of the feel. You just are immersed in this, in this story and, and you feel like you are trying to survive. Now there is backstory to your characters that you can read and then after you finish there's even stories about what happened to them after. And that is even, that's just a great touch to adding a little bit more to the theme of this game. As for the gameplay, it, it plays, and, and I explain it like, like Dead of Winter. And Dead of Winter is played over, you know, you, you're, you're in your colony and you're trying to fight zombies. And then you're going out to these locations trying to, 
trying to, you know, find things. And that's basically what you were doing. But imagine that with like stuff to do in your colony. So say you had to make stuff or or you had to, you know, board up your house or make it more secure, you could you can do that and that's kind of how it feels is is almost that dead of winter feel. And it's it's funny with between that going to locations and everything, it's it's like a a version of dead of winter meets near and far, you know, like like the storytelling in that or the storytelling in above and below that that storytelling element with a lot more storytelling and then with that similar feel of going to a, a location to try to find things and i really like how they did the the you know the range like how far different locations are and and how it it's it makes you you know it how you can spend more time at one location and that's not necessarily good like it just it the way that they made this going to locations and really there's there's a lot to do in the in your house and there's a lot that can be done and there's a lot of decisions that you'll make and that to me wasn't the greatest part of the game the greatest part of the game was this exploration because that's where you're getting all of this storytelling and 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 just how it just throws a bucket of theme on you and it's great it's it it is it's pretty pretty awesome and now the things i mean little things that i wish were a little bit different um the the dice i mean there's only one set of dice depending on which weapon you have so you could have like a knife which is is the uh you know, a yellow die which has little knife symbols on it, or you can have a gun, or you can fight with your fist. And there's only one set of dice. So what that means, and it's not really a big deal, uh, you have to roll one for the enemy that you're fighting, and then you have to roll one for yourself, and then damage is done at the same time. It's done all at once. So that, it would have been nice if they just included two sets of dice just so you could roll one and then roll the other. And, and I feel like that that is such a little, you know, nitpicking at at what I want. But as for like the the quality of it, the quality of the components are they're they're great. I like um the I mean the tokens themselves, like the shovels and, and meds, they're just cardboard pieces um that, that you're gonna punch out. But the water, the wood and the components they're like these these pieces that they're plastic pieces that are just great and they they feel great and they're they're really really nicely made and it's a uh, it's a nice nice touch to to the game as far as the build and the the, uh, the miniatures the miniatures are I mean they're pretty standard they're good they give you the little pieces to slide on the bottom of them so you can track them by color so you don't necessarily have to paint them you can. I'm not really the best painter, so that's not going to be something that I do. Um, but yeah, the the little plastic pieces to go on them, the the cards themselves, you're going to like I said, you're going to see them over and over and over again. But that's not that's that's not that's not a big deal with this because of the amount of stories that are in this book. That you know the 1,600 stories that you can you can go and an adventure through so that's uh, that's great and it's a cooperative game and that that is something that I do like and, and my wife also likes it and there there are really three games that my that my wife is always asking to be like okay we let's play that I say let's play a game and she say okay yeah we'll play let's play pandemic or let's play dead of winter this game is now one of those games that she's like well let's play this game and it's 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 that good and it it is it is great i wouldn't it, i would definitely stick to that 18 plus age range age range that's on the uh on the box but the game is it's fun it's something that it, it's fun is a, is a terrible word actually um it's not fun it's it's like you're just surviving this war and and you win by just not dying and it's like it's it's great it's fun but it's not fun i don't know how to how to how to say this but it's um it's everything just 
feels makes you feel like you're a part of the story and any game that just if I can take you know an hour two hours out of my time and feel like I'm a part of the story is is a good game this this is great and it's it's something that's that's worth playing it definitely is worth playing whether you play it once um, as for the time actually I, I will get to the how long it takes to play I believe the box says it takes like an hour to an hour and a half to play and that's uh, kind of true I guess the the way it's played is through these these chapters and each chapter has a save point and the save the save thing that they have is uh, uh, it's, it's not very good right now it's a, it's a piece of paper that you're just writing things on like the placement of things or what what different uh, tokens or components what what you have and then you're putting them in a bag and the save isn't very good we did the save once and after that we just kept it out but as for the time um, it takes I would say an hour to an hour and 45 minutes to play a chapter depending on how many decisions and how long you think about decisions and and just uh, have conversations over each decision that you make but the total gameplay I, I believe it took us about five to six hours every every bit of five hours to um, to play this game from beginning to end so it is not a game that you're gonna want to bring to like a game night once it's gonna be something that you have somebody to play with or a group to play with over a you know three or four night period uh, but uh, that's that's really that's really I mean that's minuscule you know it's 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 not very important it's it doesn't take away to how great this game is um, and that's something I mean this <laughs> I can't get over how much fun I had playing it and and the decisions and just feeling like if we do, it's like you you read them them stories in in the book and and you're just saying well we could do this but it seems you know it seems like something good would happen which means that it probably won't happen so you're always just making these decisions and it's great but I definitely do I, I recommend this for an adult game night um, and it's it's really really fun and again it's it's probably one of the better games I've played in at least a year like it's just it's it would be on my top for for the games of 2017 and that's really it so if this is looks like something you want then go pick it up but yeah I, I really enjoyed it and I I think I think many other many others will but until next time keep playing games